Shalom to all of you who are listening to me this morning. My name is Chris Nikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Friday and I want to remind all the listeners that life is very short. Some people often say, we only live once, so let me enjoy myself, let me do whatever I want. It's true that you only live once in this world, but let me tell you that there is another life after death. So we need to understand that life is short, but some people fail to understand how short life is. You feel like you have a long life ahead of you because you have strength, you have money, everything is going well, you have everything you want. But you need to realize that your earthly life is extremely short when you compare it to eternity. I know for sure that none of you who are listening to me this morning will be alive in a hundred years. When you are young and beautiful, you have a very high opinion of yourself, you feel very important because of your physical beauty. This is especially true for girls and ladies. You may love what you see in the mirror today, but I can assure you that in 50 years, you will look very different from now. You will definitely no longer have the same beauty. If you speak to ladies who are in their 70s or 80s and you ask them how they used to look 50 years ago, if you ask to see old pictures of them when they were young, you will see that they have changed a lot because our bodies age and they eventually come to an end. The more your body ages, the closer you are to the end. The apostle James compares life to a vapor. In James chapter 4 verse 14 he said, You don't know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. I want you to understand that you need to use your short earthly life in order to prepare for the afterlife. There is another life after your physical death and that life will last forever. Whether you like it or not, one day your body body will die and you will have to leave this world. Your physical body is like a house that contains your spirit and one day you will have to leave that house. That's why you need to prepare your soul before you leave that house. Many people are living in sin and they do whatever they want. You are enjoying yourself, you are living in fornication, you lie, you consume drugs and alcohol. But I want you to understand that all those things will come to an end. If you are enjoying your yourself and you keep satisfying all the desires of your flesh, you need to understand that there will be another life after death. That's why you need to abandon your sinful ways. You need to stop living in fornication. You need to prepare yourself for another life which will last forever. That's why you need to repent. You need to get on your knees and call on Jesus so he can come into your life and you can receive forgiveness of sins and eternal life. You can do it right where you are or if you need assistance from a servant of God, you can give us a call at plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven. It's now time to continue our study of the letter of Paul to Ephesians we started on January 2nd. If you're new to the broadcast, you can go to the archive section of our website or mobile app and you can listen to all the topics that we've covered so far. Our goal is to read this entire letter. Yesterday, I told you that there are many Christians who are already spiritually dead because Satan's arrows have pierced their spiritual hearts. There are many Christians who attend church regularly even though they are spiritually dead. They sing to God, they may even preach the gospel, but they are living in sin and they have no issues with that. There are many people who are living in sin and their conscience doesn't even bother them anymore. That's because they are already spiritually dead. If you are listening to this message and you know very well that you are living in sin, even though you are saved, then you need to repent. You need to understand that even people who are saved need to repent sometimes. There are some teachings out there that claim that a child of God doesn't need to repent because he's already saved, but that's not true. Those are false teachings. 
If you read 1st John chapter 1, you will see that John was writing to believers. He wasn't writing to unbelievers. He was writing to people who were saved. People who had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So in verse 9, he was showing them that they need to repent from their sins. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You need to understand that even if you are a child of God, you must repent when you sin. In the first part of this broadcast, you may have thought that I was speaking only to unbelievers who are living in sin, but there are also people who are saved who are now living in sin, and if they die in their sins, they will miss out on heaven. That's why you should always repent when you feel convicted of sin. You need to understand that repentance is not limited to confessing your sins. Some people wrongly think that repentance means to confess your sins. It's true that you need to confess your sins with your mouth, but the most important thing is in confession. The most important thing is to turn away from your sins. You need to confess your sins and you need to turn away from them. You should say, God, I have done something wrong and I don't want to do it again. That's the true repentance. You turn away from your sins and you go in the opposite direction. Let's go back to the topic of the armor of God. We saw that the second component of the armor of God is the breastplate of righteousness. And now we are going to talk about the third component of the armor of God. Verse 15 says that your feet must be fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In those days, the Roman soldiers used to wear strong sandals on their feet because they had to walk long distance and they also had to fight in fields that had many stones or many thrones. Today, soldiers don't wear sandals. They wear boots that are very solid because they have to operate in many different areas that could contain rocks or thorns or trees or other things that could prevent them from moving around easily. The soldiers wear very strong boots so they can be able to continue their journey. So the verse says that you must put on your feet the centers of the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. It means that you need to be ready to share the gospel. You need to have a zeal for sharing the gospel. In other words, if you are saved, you need to share the gospel. You need to understand that it doesn't mean that you must preach the gospel in the church or in a big conference. Sharing the gospel means to be a witness for Jesus and you can do it in many ways. You can tell people about what God has done in your own life. You can share your testimony with your co-workers. You can tell them about Jesus and how great he is. You can share the Kanguka broadcast with your co-workers or with your classmates so they can be able to listen to them. Even if they refuse to listen to them, at least you've done your part. If you are saved, if you've accepted Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior and you don't tell anyone about Jesus, if you don't encourage anyone with the word of God, if you only post about yourself on social media, you only put pictures of yourself on your WhatsApp status so your friends can see how great you look, it means that you're not wearing sandals of the readiness that comes from the gospel. It means that you don't have a zeal for sharing the gospel. You should put Bible verses on your WhatsApp status. You should post encouraging verses. You should post verses that talk about Jesus and his power. You should post verses that declare that Jesus is Lord. That's how you put on the centers of the readiness of the gospel of peace. Whenever you put something about Jesus on Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp or any other social media account, it means that you are wearing centers of the readiness of the gospel. If you share the gospel with your co-workers, if you tell them that Jesus is Lord, if if you share with them the messages that you hear on Sunday at your church, if you share with them some YouTube links so they can be able to listen to the sermons, it means that you are wearing the senders of the readiness of the gospel and you are engaged in spiritual warfare against the enemy. But if you don't do anything, you just go to church and you listen to the sermon and then you go back home and you just go on with your regular life and no one knows that you are saved. No one ever hears you testifying about what God has done. You don't share the gospel with anyone. You don't share the gospel with your friends or your co-workers or your classmates. It means that you are barefooted. You are not wearing the sandals of the readiness of the gospel. And it will be hard for you to grow spiritually. 
God willing, I will continue this topic on Monday. I wish you a great weekend. May I am bless you. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.